three chunks of stuff today. First is stuff we like, not particularly done by us, but probably more done by you guys. Two, stuff that's probably worth knowing about, a little stuff, a, a little of things that are happening at Google that are kind of interesting that you should think about for the future. And lastly, a few um, things we made if we have time. Okay, so um, lots of times at Google, we're the department that kind of helps break things down into something really simple in terms of how to explain it. And here's one of those. Um, when you think of Google, you can think of Google in, in maybe two or three ways. One is, is um, we make things that you can use to build things out of. So we make plumbing, we make stages, we make lighting and rigging. You guys make the play. Um, if you're an agency or you're a client, you guys make all that stuff. We make all the stuff underneath it. And then we sell stuff um, to help you get people to go and visit those things or see those things or understand those things or be aware of those things. Um, and what, what I'd like to talk about is um, ideally a little bit about both, but really about the first one. Because it's the part of what we, what we make and what we offer that's A, free, um, so that's always nice. Um, and two, the things that do, people are doing really cool things with that a lot of people, not a lot of people know about. So we'll jump into that. Um, okay, the first, the first chunk are things that people are doing with YouTube. And I'm gonna blast through a lot of things here. The point is this. If you can find little ideas or little angles or little, hey, could I use a cup of that in what we're doing? Or they did a pretty cool thing with that on there. I could do something like that for this other problem I have. So this is a basically a huge will it blend experiment. This is not like the, the Tom and Andy awards for coolest things ever. This is just interesting things that, that are happening. So first of all, thank you for coming back. We thought we'd need, we need a little groove to kick this off. Um, well, what can I do? Who's you seen this? Play that 16th note groove just straight. Going. you be amazed. Okay. So here's what's awesome about this. Um, all these pieces are sampled from YouTube videos. So each, right. each stroke of the drum, this guy cut out and uh, made a new rhythm. More than one this guy doing this. Okay. Somebody playing single notes, somebody playing chords, and they'll mix them together. Uh, okay. And let's just pick the mother of all funk chords. Let's pick a ninth chord. Uh. Okay. So the point is, none of those people playing in that thing ever actually played the song they're playing. This person just cobbled together those little bits, then put all the little bits of the individual players with the little bits of the other players, and made a band and a new song. And there's a whole album, Andy. And there's a whole album. It's killer. You should check it out. Um, OK, that was more than half a minute for that slide. Um, OK, um, sorry, we have to have a geeky term here. It's called API. Who knows what API means? OK, Tom says it means all-powerful imaginatorium. It actually means application programming interface. And what it means is taking all the goodness of something like YouTube or all the goodness of something like Maps and just plugging into something you're doing. Um, so there are uh, really cool examples. If you ever saw this one, a fish swimming made up of um, all these YouTube videos that were searched under a certain name. We'll go to the next one. I'll show you how this works. Um, we're not going to play this, but if you ever saw this too, this was the Alice in Wonderland frame by frame spooled out against the YouTube API. It's amazing. Go check it out. Um, this is something that RGA did. Um, uh, Bob and Barry were just in here talking about this stuff for the ad council for kids. That's actually a YouTube page. So that's entirely on YouTube. And all the functionality they built in there with the ad council is basically free. They just created the whole thing um, on the API. And it's kids talking to each other about issues about growing up and all that kind of stuff. But that's YouTube. Um, so it's all hosted and all put there. Here's another way I have to play this because this is entertaining. I want you to see the karaoke bar at the bottom. That's what we're interested in. I do not like that. Okay. Here's the interesting thing. See these words down here? Karaoke? So here's what happened. You can stop it, I know. We all like it, but. Um, so these guys went to this, they learned about the YouTube API one day in this class, and a 16-year-old, 17-year-old kid said, wow, I could, what I could do with that, I could scrape the web for lyrics while a song was playing, and I could have the lyrics come out to the sound of the music, 
and I would have like auto web karaoke. Overnight, one kid playing with this stuff. And again, this is just about, hey, what could we do with this? What are we doing that could be um, made like this? I think it's been since taken down. God knows what rights issues there are, but we better keep going because of that. Um, okay, so Sprint, this is a very cool campaign. These guys have been doing a lot of great stuff. Uh, this banner where you could literally um, um, record yourself in the banner um, doing a number and the clock would come up and you could go find yourself later. It's a pretty amazing example. You should check it out. They're doing a lot of great stuff. Animoto, very simple. People send in their pictures. Animoto turns them into a video. Um, it's these kind of little things that you can then go use in what you're doing um, or think about how could you use something that YouTube does um, to blow out what you're doing. Okay, so step away from that stuff. Think about the citizen as spokesperson. Think about Iran, it's just amazing. I think Steve's here, a couple people are here. Um, this was like the world changing and how it was changing based on YouTube. That was pe people becoming, um, literally becoming reporters. And the same way they become reporters for that, people become reporters for anything else, particularly having to do with products um, or brands. Has anyone heard of Lauren Luke? A tiny sh shout out, okay. Lauren Luke is this awesome woman who basically liked to put on makeup. And she had a camera, I think it was actually like an SLR that recorded. And what she'd do is she'd push it and then she would put on makeup and talk while she did it. And then she would post it to YouTube. She didn't even know how to edit. She couldn't even do cuts. She just had to do a one take. Well, she doesn't know what a one take is either, but it was a one take. Um, and she just would push this and push upload it to go to YouTube. Soon she had millions of people following her. She's become a complete sensation. She's signed now with, with uh, Sephora, if that's mm -hmm. pronounced correctly. Um, but the question here is, is, who's this person in your category? Like, who's this person that could do the equivalent? Have you found them? Are you making them? Um, watch this BBC feature, because it's killer. Um, next one, Nike 5. So Nike um, had all these assets that you guys know about left over from shoots. So they have B-rolls, and they have you know, um, phone cam pictures that they all took and all this stuff and said, what do we do with this? It all ends up kind of nowhere. So they put together this entire sort of experience based on that um, and put it on YouTube, but it's also very cool. Next one, um, the Webbies. Again, that's a YouTube site. Now it's a huge gadget put over a website, which may not mean anything, but each one of those is a video you can click on. Um, and again, all hosted, all held um, at YouTube. And we can't go through it, it takes too long. Again, this is um, HP doing a program where you can literally cut your own video um, and, and submit things entirely on YouTube. So you can literally do the editing there. I don't know if you've seen this, this is definitely worth, worth going to. Um, um, Seth MacFarlane, and I think this is with, um, with Burger King and Crispin, but you can go and dub over the characters and do your own uh, bit, and it's, it's truly funny. Um, but again, that's a YouTube page. Okay, second, second um, sort of geeky word, annotations. Who knows what annotations are on YouTube? Okay, I had to like be in like 10 meetings before I, somebody said, you can click on the video. Oh, you can click on the video. I get it. You can click on the video. So if you've been to Boone Oakley, I don't know if there's anybody here from Boone Oakley, but big shout out to you guys. Their entire website is in this video. You click on the video to find out what you want and it jumps you to another part of the video and you're able to play with it. Um, it's definitely worth checking out. But if you imagine what you can do with clickable videos, you'll kind of jump forward. The next one. All right, let's play a little bit of this one. Okay. So the point here is this turns into a game. And the entire game happens in the video. So it's where you click in the game is how you play the video. And the entire thing is hosted um, on YouTube. You pick one of the players, you go through, you kick the crap out of each other. Um, um, but it's all hosted there. Um, next one. Um, <laughs> another guy with no shirt. Um, here's another uh, example of a game completely built in YouTube um, with annotations. Let's keep going faster. Um, Mosaic, if you've seen this, this is um, stills from classic YouTube videos um, made into one video that then is clickable through to each video. It's insanely confusing as you dive into it. This is stills of videos of 
Um, this band actually went and had all their fans do this dance. They put the dance together, they put that together so you can go into individual videos. Um, okay, this is just a perennial favorite. Um, if you haven't seen this, this is um, uh, it's probably the best example of product demonstration I've ever seen in my life, um, just because it uses insults as a, as a fundamental sort of approach. So this is called NB flat, and this is um, a guy who realized you can play almost an endless amount of YouTube videos at once. So we got a lot of people to all compose in B flat, and he put these things together um, to make a song made out of all their stuff. Um, it, if Tom could do this fast enough. Um, you don't need to play all of them. I mean, the point is it becomes a composition tool and you can play in and out. It's just so, trippy. It's really, YouTube has almost become this sort of new set of play tools that people are imagining things on that then, that then sort of go, um, go upstream. It's better at like four in the morning when you're making a presentation. Um, okay, so. Um, you done with that? Next one. There's a lot of things floating sort of from free associated creative on YouTube flowing up to TV. So things about post-its, next one, Tom. Things about pictures, things about shadows. There's a lot of this stuff. It's becoming a canvas. Not just videos you watch, but how stuff's actually created, hosted, um, and how experiences are made. Okay, that's YouTube. So Maps, the second big sort of platform, the second API that you can use um, to jam interesting things or, or functionality into what you're doing. Okay, has so anyone seen this? It's called, I think, Blaubo. Okay, this is a very cool idea. So someone said, I want to take my portfolio, but I want people to navigate around in it like they do on Google Maps. I want them to be able to pull back, look at the whole thing, pull in, go north, grab it, move it around, um, and it's really beautiful. And it's really just people saying, wow, well, Maps is a cool experience, and, but here's some different content. What if we put this with this and this with this and this with this and sort of playing will it blend? Scribble Maps. So this is someone taking um, our maps and saying, well, wouldn't it be cool if you could just like take a map you're doing something with and like make some stuff on it and then share it with everybody and it would be like your map that you made. Scribble maps. And you, um, Zappos, next one. So this is real time, if is, anybody's seen this, it's great. It's basically what shoes are being bought everywhere. Um, <laughs> um, and, you know, okay, Nation of Go, this is, this, so this is interesting. So if you, if you sell tires, and um, you know that the people that you sell to are really into driving, maybe you talk more to them about driving. Um, and what these guys made is it's, 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 just, it's a map where you, you go on a drive with your phone, um, you sort of, because of GPS, sort of figure out where that drive is, they map it, you take pictures, we do not recommend driving and taking pictures at the same time, um, um, but then other drivers see those drives and drive them. And again, this is like the platform thing that, that Bob and Barry were talking about, about how do you build on what people are interested in and get them involved rather than just kind of go and do single campaigns. If you take this one more step um, in a different direction, this is Map My Run. This is saying, okay, well, I'm gonna go run a certain way and I wanna see how far that is, so I'm gonna make a line, I'm gonna use draggable driving directions, uh, draggable um, yeah, directions, and it's gonna show me how far that was. Um, and then I'll know how much I'm walking every day, sort of going backwards. And the next one, my tracks, and this happens to be available on, on uh, Android, uh, the platform, is this will show you your actual splits. This will show you what elevations you went to when you were running or riding, what your times were within your elevations. Um, tons of details for hardcore runners or, or bikers. Um, next one, this is the Tate in, um, in the UK saying, hey, let's make a map of all, all the great art in our country and actually have users go find it and tag it. So not just, not just the Tate's art, but the UK's entire sort of treasury of art um, and invite everybody to participate and come and build that. Next one, um, Monopoly. So here's an amazing franchise, right? Um, and, and you play it on this board that's this big and you remember where all this is. We said, oh my God, maps is absolutely perfect. So now if we've checked it out, it's, it's very cool. Um, you play Monopoly, but it's as big as it wants to get. Uh, next one. All right, this is pretty random, but this is called Ohio as a piano. Um, 
And somebody took all the counties of Ohio and made them piano keys. And you can play them manually, if you would like. Um, you can play them by per capita income. You can play them by, um, you know, output of soybean products. You can, um, um, but what's happening is people are just jamming all this stuff together and thinking, I'm trying to, <laughs> I'm. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> So I, I, I have a customer um, or a client or both, and I'm trying to think of how to make an experience um, that would either be useful or entertaining or magical or something, and what are all the pieces that I can put together that might create that? So next one. Um, the Uniglo, I don't know if you guys have seen this fashion map. So here's the deal. People make a video of themselves taking a jacket from the right, putting it on, taking it off, hanging it to the left. Everybody does the same thing. Um, wherever they want. They cut the videos together and it looks like people all over the country are passing around the same jacket. Um, um, and, you know, will it change the world? I don't know. But for jackets, <laughs> seems to work. Now, if you don't like Earth um, at all and you'd rather make a different planet, um, um, sorry for that ad. I don't know that, um, but, but World of Warcraft just starts clean and makes their own. Um, and that's a pretty interesting thought, um, you know, extrapolated to whatever, you, whatever it is you might be doing. If anyone's seen this, um, this is the 9-11 Memorial Project. I think we're helping them out a little bit. And it's basically a place where anyone who, um, ha you know, was present during 9-11 or who has memories or pictures or anything can go and upload either comments or pictures or thoughts into this one place that everyone else can then come on and see. And with a combination of the Maps API and Street View, understand where all those things took place. It's really, it's really pretty amazing. Um, and it's another idea of, of, of how to mash those things up. So if you were around, um, okay, <laughs> to jump to the completely other end, um, these are some guys who just put tape in their office to represent Street, street View. And um, it is just sticky tape, and we just want to give them a shout out. Um, <laughs> so there you have it. Um, one, of the, um, one of the coolest things happening, and you know, a lot of you probably participated in this, is interactive projection, um, and data-fed pro projection, and dynamic projection, and the ability to fill spaces um, with content and have people react um, to them or with them. Can you see this? It's pretty... Um, so, I'm not sure what that meant, but, um, but the, po the point is, if you feed that with other things, like you feed that with real-time data, or you feed that with geopositioning, or you feed that with video, um, you start to build worlds that are really interesting. Um, datum, you, how many of you are familiar with Datum? Okay, Datum is just pure geeking out um, on how you, any kind of data in your life that you can go play with and say, hey, you know, I've looked at this whole thing and I actually spend X amount of time doing this certain activity and that's pretty scary and I need to stop. <laughs> um, but it, it is literally just, just fun with data, and there's some, there's some interesting stuff, and it uses a bunch of our, um, our G-Data API, which is just probably the geekiest of the data, of the, of the APIs, but it's, it's really interesting if you want to check it out. Next one. Okay, so Stweet. This is, if you are, if you so opt in um, and want to participate, you, wherever you tweet from, um, the person you, you will be represented with that Street View image of where you're uh, tweeting from. So, so literally, that's where I am when, I, when I'm saying this, or check this out, or I want you to see this. And again, it's just baking things into, baking new things into things that already exist. Um, next one, this is another great site, uh, the We Tell Stories site. Um, the simple uh, insight was that books are a journey. They're always a journey. There's always places in them. And so um, Penguin took this and said, hey, let's actually let people move through books and the spaces they inhabit um, while they read. 
Uh, Wordle is a huge favorite. It's, it's, um, you've probably seen it. It was an engineer at IBM that just put this together to, to, to say, hey, any, any, any chunk of text, um, it'll design the type algorithmically with the, with the size of the type representing like a tag cloud, uh, the incidence of the words. It's totally geeky. I just like it. Um, OK, augmented reality. How many people are familiar with this? Is this? OK, good. So you've probably seen this, the AKQA one um, uh, for the Postal Service about literally holding up a package and seeing you know, what size box it fits in. Um, there's some more stuff. This is kind of shameless of us. But I want to show you this, because this is um, Hello, my name is Philip Bruce. I'm one of the developers of Wikitude. I would like to demonstrate it to you now. I got it here, right on my Android phone. At first, I have to search for some points of interest. Now, let's click on the cam view button that brings you to our augmented reality camera view. Uh, this is Festung Horn Salzburg, which is a very beautiful medieval castle. So do you see what, the, what that's doing? One of the main it's literally of identifying what the camera sees based on the, the coordinates of the camera and the direction of the camera. Um, so you're finding maps of whatever you're looking at. The next version of this, um, which is kind of interesting, is SkyMap. And this is taking your phone and holding it up at the stars, looking through your phone, through the camera, and it identifying whatever stars you're looking at. Um, and it's really cool. Um, and again, this is not because, hey, go buy a truckload of Google Sky Maps today. That is, that is not my point. It's more about how does the camera being able to see and explain to you what you're seeing work or might work in something that, that you're doing. Um, this is just completely geeked out. It has nothing to do with us. Um, but this is um, um, touchable holography. So holograms, you stick your hand in this box. Well, I don't know if you would want to do this. But you stick your hand in this box. and and your hand feels like it's being rained on, but it's not. Whether you know it or not, there's a tiny button up there. It's not a button, it's a word, um, called more. And behind more is a list of a lot of stuff that we, we make. And the following things I'm going to talk about may or may not be there, quite frankly. Um, but there are a couple of things that are worth thinking about as you're going forward. And I'm not predicting the future. I'm not saying where anything's going. Um, but these are kind of interesting things that are worth checking out a bit. So Wave, um, yes, it is an hour and 20 minute video demo of software. Um, but you should watch it. Um, not because um, so you can get, you know, sign up for it immediately, but because it's a completely different way of thinking about how we could all collaborate together. And it's truly real time in a sense that really hasn't kind of existed yet. Um, so next one, um, Android, um, the, the apps I told you about. The idea of it being open source, anybody can use it. Um, the idea is to get, to let phones kind of experience the freedom and all that innovation uh, that the web brought to PCs. Um, next one. OK, how many people use trends at all, Google Trends or Insights or anything like this? OK. I've seen presentations about this that, that are like, some are good and some are not. The point is, it's the most interesting ideating tool ever. Um, Basically finding out in aggregate what people are thinking about when and wonder why, whether it's down to countries or times of the year um, and the most random stuff ever. And I can't tell you how many companies who thought they were expert in something about when people started buying something looked at this and found out, well, people actually started looking for ski gear in August. That's when people really start looking. It's, it's, it's not October, November. Um, and so there's just... Basically, anything you do, finding more, this is not just sort of planning media. This is literally thinking about how you think about um, your customers or your clients. Uh, so next one, voice search. How many people have an iPhone? How many people have used voice search? OK. So what happens when you don't have to type anymore, when you literally just say anything and you find it? What does that matter um, with your clients or your customers or that type of thing? Um, it really works, and it really works well. It's come a long way, so give a thought to that. Next one, um, translate. This is pretty amazing. So this stuff is, I, I think, somewhat available now. <laughs> um, it's all there. This is, this is 
where you're chatting with someone. It's a regular Gmail chat, except you, you invite an interpreter in. And uh, Tom speaks UK. I speak American. Um, <laughs> let's say um, we invite uh, a translator in, and we just chat back and forth. The translator translates. Or say you go, you get an email in Gmail, but it's from someone in a different language. You say translate into mine, or you want to send somebody something in another language. You write it in English. You say translate to that language, and you send it. Same with entire web pages. Um, you see a page, it comes up in search, and you say, hey, translate this to Spanish, because I speak Spanish. Um, it's not perfect, um, but it's pretty amazing. So um, play with it a little bit, check it out. It's worth um, knowing about it. Next one, fast flip. Has anyone seen this? Um, it's very simple. It lets you page through content um, the way you page through a magazine, but on the web. Um, and if you think about this, so this is Business Week, you're on the web, just kind of paging through, just, just looking at it. But, but what about catalogs? What about other ways people consume um, things that they just want to flip through where, where back and forth and next and one and scroll and all that kind of stuff gets a little tedious? Um, it's something to think about. Next one. Video chat. Um, I have to tell you, this seems very mundane. Um, but this little window down here in the bottom of Gmail um, where you can video chat for free with anyone anywhere as much as you like, it's amazingly useful um, to show people how to do things, um, to help people do things, just to literally communicate. It hasn't been used a lot. Um, it's worth checking out because once, it, once this kind of thing becomes ubiquitous, uh, a lot will change. Next one. Um, your location. Okay, there's this app called Remember the Milk, and I haven't really nailed it yet. Um, but what it will do is literally tell you, and I think uh, Bob and Barry are working on some stuff like this too, you arrange your stuff to do so that when you drive by a certain place and you need to pick up stuff there, it knows where you are and the things you need to get at that store, and it says, hey, stop and get this stuff. Um, and for me, I mean, it's the greatest thing ever. Like, if it told me every single thing to do in my life, I'd be really happy. <laughs> um, um, but it is an amazing thought about how you think about selling whatever you sell, whether you sell something at retail or whether anything else, the fact that, that this is possible more and more and not just on some smartphones, but more and more something everybody has. How does that change the way you think um, um, about what you do? And it's not proprietary. It's not expensive. You don't have to go build it. Um, um, it's out there. Okay, we made this thing called Favorite Places on Maps. And, and all it is is a list of, we got really interesting people from Paul Coelho to Charles Valley, the most traveled person in the world, if that's true. Um, Yo-Yo Ma, who else? There was a whole, whole list of people. And if you go to any city, um, you can find out where these people love to hang out and go check them out. Um, you can make your own map. You can grab things from these people. You can add them. Um, and of course, you can get it on any, on any mobile. So it's been fun. Um, Chrome, Chrome Experiments was a kind of cool thing. It was a muscle test for JavaScript. Yes, I know you're stoked. Um, <laughs> um, we have a browser called Chrome, and it's um, really, really fast. Um, and so we made all these sort of um, feats of strength for it that was a lot of fun. Um, next one. Um, Radiohead, this was a while back, but it was still a lot of fun. Radiohead shot a video without any cameras. It was purely shot in data. It was all shot as points in space. Um, and then put together. And, and when we found out about it, we sort of geeked out and said, oh, that's the coolest thing ever. Um, and it's really something to, t to take a look at because the technology they use, the rotating laser that, that literally paints space, it's what they're using to capture um, um, ancient spaces and, um, and castles and things like that, to literally capture the details of a space and turn them into data. And then that data can be used for something else. And not only did we post the song and the video, but they let us take um, a portion of the data, even a portion of the song, even a portion of their IP, and give it away to anybody to mash up. And people made the absolute coolest things out of it. Um, so we liked that one. Lastly, the symphony. Um, we had a ball with this thing. We made a thing called the YouTube Symphony Orchestra. A lot of people over there um, helped. Um, uh, we invited people from all over the world to come and play Carnegie Hall. And it was, a, it was just an insanely proud moment. Um, and and we, we bring it up because uh, we want to share with you a little moment. Um, this was um, Chris the Caesar. He's sitting right over there. And Ed, Ed's here too, yeah. 
So this was like a few hours before the performance. And, uh, and things weren't going that well. Um, and we ultimately did not have a dress rehearsal. And I don't think we ever really admitted this to anyone, have we? Yeah. Um, the house was packed. We had 104 media companies represented um, at this event. The, the, the previous record at Carnegie Hall, I think, was like 42 or something. And, um, and so when we were sitting here, all we really saw was error messages um, projected on Carnegie Hall. Um, and it was really an, it was an awful time. <laughs> um, and fortunately, um, when it all came together, um, we didn't fail. And it became absolutely magical. Um, and it happened. And the reason we throw this in here is because these experiments are just what that, they are, experiments. Can you put a few things together? Can you try something different? And because the cost of, of hosting an experiment on YouTube or using maps or something has come down to a place where you don't have to bet the whole farm, you can try things. You can experiment um, and see what happens or run multiple experiments. Um, and if that doesn't work, then all else fails. You should make stickers. Um, um, these are some stickers we made a long time ago because no one could learn how to do Gmail fast. Um, um, and they're pretty fun, and they actually worked really, really well, but they are a lower risk endeavor. Um, so um, last one. So this is, if you want to check out anything, not any brilliance I had, but that's the address. Uh, it might change when legal gets to it, so go quick. Um, okay, I have to go. Thank you very much. <clears throat>